Hi everyone, welcome back to GCSE Easy. We're going to be covering some more of the organisation topic today, having a look at plant tissues and organs. So we're going to be looking at what organs plants have, the tissues that make up the leaf in particular, and what makes leaves just so fantastic at grabbing that light energy and using it to turn carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. So make sure as always, you grab some paper, grab some pens, and then you follow along with me. When we think of the term organ, we often think about humans. You know, we've got organs, our heart, our brain, our lungs. But when you look at a plant, you can't really see anything that resembles an organ to us. But plants do have organs, because remember, an organ is just a group of tissues that work together. So the plants have four main organs that you need to know at this stage. Your flower, your leaf, your stem and your roots. Starting from the top then, the flower is used for reproduction. It's there to look pretty, to attract pollinators, which will then do the ultimate job of mixing the sperm and the egg together to fertilize an egg. And a seed is actually just the fertilized egg. So in humans, that would be after the sperm and egg had fused. Underneath the flowers then, you've got leaves. Leaves are, of course, for absorbing light photosynthesis. They are big and broad to make sure they trap as much light as they can. And the little factories inside, the chloroplasts, are using that light energy for photosynthesis. The leaf's job is not just absorbing light for photosynthesis, it's also where gases are exchanged. I often like to think leaves as being sort of the lungs of the plant. So inside your leaf, you've got your carbon dioxide and your oxygen exchanging, and some water vapour is also lost anytime those stomata at the bottom of the leaf are open. The stem is used mainly for holding up the flower and the leaves so they're able to be out there for pollination or out up really high to pick up on light. Uh, but they also are sort of a network of tubes that transport things like sugar and oxygen around. Um, the xylem carries water and minerals, usually going from the roots up into the uh, leaves for photosynthesis and other parts. Uh, the minerals are then used for growth as well as so stuff like magnesium and other ions that are in the soil. Lastly, we've got the roots then. They are there to absorb water and nutrients from the soil. That water is needed for photosynthesis and those nutrients are for growth. And the plant is also anchored by them. So it's their way of sort of gripping onto the earth so they don't get washed away by water or blown away by the wind. Okay, you're gonna to need to look at the leaf structure in a bit more detail. These leaves on first look don't really look like much. Big green things fluttering nicely in the wind, make nice noise uh, on a windy day. But if you were to get a leaf and chop it in half with a pair of scissors, you wouldn't really see much. But if you were to blow this up with a microscope and zoom right in on the very small line you get when you've cut your leaf in half, you would see something completely weird and alien. So let's have a look at that together. So leaves are just an organ of a plant and organs are just made of different tissues. So there are lots of different tissues you need to know. In terms of exams, you just be to be able to identify on a diagram where each bit would be and know what those bits do and what sort of structures and functions they have to make them good at their jobs. So starting at the top, you've got the cuticle, or sometimes it's called the wax cuticle. Underneath that, you have a layer of cells that are clear. This is called the upper epidermis. An epidermis is just a covering layer, so you've got one at the top and the one on the bottom. After that, you've got the, something called the palisade layer, or sometimes it's called the palisade mesophyll. Under there, sort of in a little bundle, this is actually the vein parts of the leaf you can see. So if you hold the leaf up to the light, you can see the little network of tubes, almost like blood vessels. This is the veins inside the leaves, almost like blood vessels themselves. So these are the xylem and phloem bundles, which are transporting minerals and sugars and water around. Embedded in that as well, you've got something called the spongy layer, or sometimes this is also called the spongy mesophyll. These are little sort of round, weird shaped cells that leave loads of space for air. You then have the lower epidermis on the bottom and then dotted around the lower epidermis you have these guard cells and the stoma or stomata as they're called if you've got more than one. Lots of people get these confused. You have the guard cells on the side but the stoma is the actual hole. Okay so that's pointing them out in a diagram. You, again you need to be able to do that in an exam so I'd challenge you to draw it out or you know you don't you do not have to be the world's greatest artist. You could literally just draw them as layers using a, a line and a circle for the vein. But you need to be able to go roughly on a diagram where those bits are. Okay, so that's the structures. Let's look at the structures and what they do. So at the top, you've got the waxy cuticle. This layer, being wax, is waterproof. 
so this stops too much water being lost from the leaves. The only place the plant wants to leave wa lose water through is the stomata, otherwise they dry out far too quickly. The upper epidermis is, a, again, a thin layer of cells. These cells are completely clear, they're transparent. This is to let light into the cells below for photosynthesis. You then got the palisade layer or the palisade mesophyll. These cells are stacked, um, sort of shoulder to shoulder almost, to jam as many of them into that layer as possible to absorb as much light as possible for photosynthesis. And these cells are absolutely jam packed full of chloroplasts to get as much of that light energy as possible and use it for photosynthesis. Okay, that weird little bundle, the vein, has the xylem and phloem in it. Again, xylem carries water and minerals flow and carry sugars. People often get them confused, so make sure you know the difference. Underneath that you've got the spongy layer. So these are the weird sort of oblongy shaped cells. The most important bit of this layer is the air spaces, not the cells themselves. So these air spaces allow oxygen and carbon dioxide to diffuse in and out during gas exchange, similar to what happens in an alveoli in our lungs. Okay, so when we're talking about leaves, it's important to think about photosynthesis. I can't, don't have a tally of how many times I've said it. If you're keeping tally yourself, then you need to get out more. Okay, so you have carbon dioxide and water. You use light energy to break those bonds in those molecules and then reform them into some oxygen and some glucose. At the bottom of the leaf, you've got the lower epidermis and embedded in it, you have stomata and guard cells. Now, the stomata is just a hole. It's like a pore, like the pores in our skin. This when it's open, lets the gases exchange, but it also lets water leak out as well. But we'll talk about that in another lesson. Guard cells, their job is literally to just open and close the stomata hole. So when conditions are quite hot and the plant wants to conserve water, the guard cells will shut the hole so the plant keeps hold of the water. And when it's cooled down a bit, the guard cells will open up to allow those gases to exchange again and to let some water be lost. So if we look at carbon dioxide to start with, CO2 is diffusing in from the air through that stomata gap and into the cells in the leaf. Water then is going to come from the soil, be absorbed by the roots by osmosis and then go up through the xylem to wherever it's needed. Light energy is coming from the sun. This is a endothermic reaction. Oxygen's going the other way. Oxygen's a waste product. Anything that's not used by the plant itself is going to go out of the stomata when it's open. Your glucose is going to be converted into starch and then that's going to be stored in places like the leaves and the roots or the glucose is going to be used straight away in respiration. I've mentioned xylem vessels already. If you can't remember xylem vessels I suggest you go back to my cell biology module and have a look at the specialised cell lesson. The xylem are hollow and the water inside them, water and minerals, is going to be travelling one direction from the roots to the leaves. Now the water and minerals is needed for photosynthesis so that's where it's headed. So it's going to be sucked up like a big straw uh, from the roots to the leaves, up the stem, in stomata and then it will escape, diffuse into the air. And that sort of movement from root to stem to leaf to air actively sucks up more water from the roots. Okay, the next type of tissue, or sorry, the next type of cells that are part of that vein is called a phloem. Now these transport sugars, but unlike xylem, the sugars can either move up or down depending on where they're needed. Now the glucose that travels in the phloem is going to originate in the leaves or anywhere that's doing photosynthesis, but they're not necessarily going to be need this, needed there straight away. So the phloem will transport the sugars to what places we call sinks, where they then turn it into starch and store it, so places like the roots. And then in the summer months when the plant's growing, that sort of store of starch can be turned back into glucose and transported up through the phloem to the leaves where it can be used in respiration and growth. Okay, we're going to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching all the way through to the end. Uh, I will be uploading hopefully a bit more regularly than I have been. I've been trying out this new video format. Let me know in the comments if you like it. I kind of like doing the tablet more, makes my writing a bit clearer. Okay, I'm going to leave you with a joke. How do trees watch YouTube videos? They log on to their accounts. Please don't unsubscribe. I'll see you soon.